when will Henry Cavill's hair not cause an uproar? From the lesser known chest hair, beard, face, debate for Man of Steel on hair invincibility, which I remember, to the mustache gate of Justice League and Mission Impossible we all want to forget. And now, this awful but somehow incredibly memorable anime hairdo here? That last bit is somewhat indicative of the movie we will discuss now. If you are at all in the sphere of influence of the film community or fandom, then you are probably like me. You're really sick and tired of the Argyle trailer that's been marketed to death. Like, really tired of it. I think it does set up the whole meet the real Agent Argyle as too much of a focus of the movie, leading to some really great memes that I've seen. Maybe the real Agent Argyle is the friendships we formed along the way is my favorite one yet. But I also didn't realize just how damaging this trailer was to the perception of the film until I paid attention to the rest of the marketing and then experienced the movie itself. The marketing has been deceptive. Based on posters and descriptions from them, this is not a Henry Cavill romantic spy thriller adventure at all. The main characters aren't even in that whole side of the promotional material. Then the trailer gives away far too many twists, fights, set pieces, and moments. So the first 30 minutes to hour of the film feels like a rehash of the trailer we already saw 100 times, which made it be more of a chore and a bore than it should have been. Henry Cavill and John Cena are horrendously underutilized. I mean, pretty much completely wasted. The aforementioned marketing does the film no favors outside of the initial mystery. And then there's about seven or eight other big plot twists, all of which, and I mean all of them, I called either before the movie, early in the movie, or right before they happened. By the time one of the later ones rolled around that actually was surprising, it had grown tiresome by that point. Many of them feel contrived just because of their predictability alone, but also border convolution at several points. There's also some choice uses of CGI I strongly disliked. I get using it to enhance sequences of action or locations, but it stretched believability a lot of the time more than it helped. It became entirely too obvious what wasn't real and what was. Some of the CG elements themselves are fine, but most of them are just really bad and stick out like a sore thumb, like the cat and the humor. I smirked several times, but I mostly just had the deadpan face as I watched. Most of the jokes just aren't funny, they don't land or feel completely forced, save for a couple. As usual with the witty banter movies nowadays, it's par for the course. People are still chasing that Marvel formula, that witty banter, everybody's witty, quippy, which has gotten so stale in my opinion. Argyle does get better as it goes along. There's some pretty good fight sequences with really unique ideas and visuals that brought a smile to my face. Sometimes they're edited perfectly with a unique style and technique I had never seen, which was awesome and it involves blinking. But then the next was heavily edited hide stunt doubles, which is sad because the cast is wonderful and when they did learn the choreography it looked amazing added to the fun factor and that cast is just a stacked list of credentials of ever dependable fantastic actors who give who give all they've got here but many of them are just wasted in favor of a complex plot brian cranston as always is amazing has an incredible screen presence but he also leads to some sequences of severe tonal imbalance due to how he's written sam rockwell is so likable in playing against type which never got old bryce dallas howard absolutely owns every bit of her character, any type of scene she has, and is the shining star in an otherwise messy movie. I really liked everyone else. I mean, just Google the cast and you'll see what I mean. But she did a phenomenal job and I hope that the inevitable follow-ups that are at least planned continue to give them more to do as a pairing because the playing against type for several actors here held my interest longer than many other portions of the film did. But all of the negative aspects, tonal imbalances, and straight up poor logic within story beats, for example, what I mean, what do I mean? Not shooting bad guys when they clearly could for the sake of an action sequence that's admittedly unique and cool, to then ignore the danger after said moment, to then shoot the bad guys, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of that sequence in the first place. And then one other one, implying a huge natural disaster masked as a victory? What are y'all thinking? All of these things do detract from some clever, inventive, and really fun ideas. Ultimately, Argyle becomes a messy, overlong, overstuffed, imbalanced chore of a good idea that I was just ready to be over with. I was literally sitting in there in the theater just thinking, man, like, ready for this to end and drive home. Is that affected by a marketing scheme? Yeah, that scheme backfired. They did my boy Cavill dirty with the screen time and haircut, which seems to be a theme with him lately, poor guy. And honestly, they did the same thing to John Cena too. You rarely see him in this movie. Look, I will admit that it certainly had its moments 
and there's a ton of potential with the rock solid cast and lively energy to all the proceedings. But I've seen it all before and better. It tries to do so much and yet accomplish so little. Ultimately, I'm pretty disappointed. I give Argyle 2.5 out of five stars. I've seen worse. I just didn't really like it. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button and remember, always look for the good.